The digital nomad dream is dead, at least for the peasant version. You know the one where you can take a cheap economy ticket so that you can fly to Bali with three stopovers, just with a backpack, stay in a $10 hostel and get bitten by bad bugs. We hate to break it to you, but it was never a good idea to sacrifice your entire life just for a soulless Instagram picture. And all of that just to look free, but instead you're living a life like a backpack brokey. So if the digital nomad dream is dead, is there anything to replace it? We're going to share that with you at the end of the video. Video, but before we get into that, you need to first understand why the digital nomad dream is dead. Yeah, so the first thing is really coming to the constantly rising cost that we see around the globe with everything like housing, food, your sacred morning coffee, the plane tickets, and yes, even Bali gets more and more expensive these days. So the wrong question at this point is really asking yourself, how can I save as much money as possible by staying at the cheapest place? And uh, yeah, YouTube is full of advice from digital nomad peasant gurus that recommend like travel guides on how to travel on a budget as long as possible without making any additional income in the progress. And today we want to turn this whole thing upside down and really come up with the real question here, which is how can you make so much money that it just doesn't matter where you are. You can go wherever you want because you want it and not because it's cheap there. And the mindset that most people have when they want to become digital nomads is how can I take advantage of other people right so get everything the cheapest price uh, lowball people on their airbnbs take advantage of cheaper currencies which is okay also how can i get the cheapest prices in restaurants and, and everything and they end up like sometimes in not so good places you know sometimes with getting food poisoning or getting bitten by bad bugs and things like that and this doesn't have to be this way absolutely and this whole thing of like traveling as long as possible with little spending is just all coming from a lack mindset where you do not have like an idea how to get more and just maintain and like there is only so far you can go with like reducing your cost until it gets really 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 uncomfortable when it comes to traveling and living or should I say surviving so you really got to ask yourself how long do you want to keep traveling like a backpack brokey yeah and I've seen so many people ending up in places that are really dangerous actually and there was this one story of uh, someone that I know who was going on a trip and was going a little bit outside of the city like two hours here in Panama and then his girlfriend had a severe food poisoning and there was no hospital around right so just because they wanted to save a little bit on, on their Airbnb cost she was having really bad issues right absolutely like it's so easy to book that first one-way ticket and then what right you're in one place you're getting by and there with this one-way ticket comes in uh, like some tricky situations as well of people we've heard that just spend and spent and spent even if it was like saving a lot but then they're stuck in their place and they cannot go home anymore because they cannot afford the ticket and not being able to go home is really the last thing you want to encounter and that brings us right to point number two which is like once you book that ticket then what's gonna happen and this starts not after you arrive at the place but actually previously right because you don't want to arrive in some random country that you've never been before with not knowing the living situation Situation. Maybe you've researched a little bit online, but that's usually very different from the real place. Yeah, let's say you you have booked this Airbnb and you find out, okay, cool, once you're there, the Wi-Fi isn't working, the washing machine is trash, and then maybe you wear glasses and your glasses break and you don't have a backup plan in place, right? So what do you do? What if you live in misery there? What if the economy turns to shit? What if you lose your remote job that you worked your ass off for someone else, right? Or what if you actually have a business, right? And, and you have maybe a social media agency or something and you have one or two clients that make 100% of your income and you lose one of them. What do you do then, right? Some of my friends actually are remote workers and they became expats. And funny thing is, if you work for someone else, right? If you have a boss and even though you're working remote, people change their minds. So sometimes they just need to go back into the office, right? And need to go back to Germany. And that's not fun if you live in a country for one year or so, you start liking it and then you have to, to leave unfortunately because else you would lose your job so you cannot be truly free and live in financial geographical and time freedom if you work for someone else that's why you need to have some sort of a side hustle where you work for yourself and it's not that you have to have it immediately you can slowly transition it building the business on the side just for your own and, and day by day enjoy more freedom and that's absolutely the point where we're getting at here like you building this aside or like you built this plan generally speaking 
speaking to sustain yourself in, a, in such a place before you go there, before you buy the ticket, before you hop on the plane. The mistake here is really for a lot of people starting without a rock solid plan that can sustain this lifestyle in any economic situation. What if the boss wants to call you back or as you said, like the client cancels, like how can you get beyond these storms and still sustain the lifestyle? And this starts way before you get to hop on the plane. And it's so important that you have this plan. And I don't mean just have it in your mind, put it down on paper and put down the exact numbers you need to hit. For example, let's say you're a nomadic closer, write down the exact commissions that you get each close, right? Let's say you get 500 bucks per close and you want to earn 10k a month and calculate how much of those closes you need to do each week in order to sustain that lifestyle so you don't survive, but actually thrive and enjoy being a digital nomad or an expat. And that brings us to the next point, which is people, they want to go on this adventure on their own just to find out everything is different than they thought it was. And this is one of my pet peeves because it's so easy avoidable. If you just ask other people for their advice, it doesn't hurt to hire a mentor, especially for something that you've never done before. Other people have walked the walk before and navigated the path full of errors, right? So you don't have to make mistakes yourself. You can actually make less mistakes by having a mentor who's already done all the mistakes and you don't have to make them again and again and again. And there's this saying that you have to learn from mistakes. Nobody's actually telling you that you don't have to do them yourself. You can learn from other people's mistakes and avoiding them in the first place. And of course, you don't have to take this from us, right? I mean, you can go around. We spoke about it before. There's YouTube, there is Instagram, there is Google. You can search other experts on this topic to learn from and see like people who done it, who have walked the walk and sharing their knowledge by these days. For us, we recently had the pleasure to interview over 68 experts on the digital nomad topic, like people that have made it, that have shared their best kept secrets and insider tips on like how to make 10k a month while traveling full time and also like being able to work from anywhere. Or as I said, their best kept secrets and insider strategies or like the hottest trends in the digital nomad space that are going on right now. And so after this, we have this huge vault of knowledge that we are now sharing with you guys like piece by piece in this video, for example. But there is a lot more and it's really like taking the shortcut once you start to connect the dots and see like what is possible and what mistakes to avoid and like seeing other people like just stepping in one of the common pitfalls like all the time then coming back to us talk with us like I'm like hey like this could have all be avoided so if you're watching this right now like and you don't want to make these unnecessary mistakes and step into those pitfalls and just save yourself a lot of valuable time and the good thing about these interviews that we did with these experts is that we recorded all of them and we did the biggest summit in the entire world for digital nomads and if you want to you can grab yourself a free ticket here because you're watching this video in the video description i think it's the second link and then you can sign up for that digital nomad summit and enjoy all those talks and experience all these insider secrets yourself and so you see this cliche digital nomad dream of like just buying a one-way ticket hopping in a plane pack up your backpack and just go away and enjoy the adventure of your life is kind of death because rising costs like there are a lot of mistakes to make there are plans that you need to actually sustain it and not be, be coming right back after like one week or two and, and just feeling like oh like that didn't work out and when those things happen for most people that dream is dead anyways like after coming back and like failed so miserably so what is replacing it we spoke about this before and so the future of digital nomads in our opinion is really like an evolution of the classical digital nomad dream that we had and this is like becoming a wealthy nomad that means like a person who can sustain themselves like long term in these lifestyles like work from anywhere live anywhere they want having the time and the location independence and really coming from an abundance mindset and an abundance of opportunities to do and to like maintain everything in a sustainable way and this is like the best hedge you have against rising costs like inflation global events like we had with the pandemic and stuff like that the economy that could shift at any point and and just be in your favor or on the worst side against you and yeah generally speaking we have like rising numbers every month every year of more digital nomads going out into the world flooding the hot spots leading to rising costs in housing and just like everything in those locations and so you really got to find a solution to to go with that if you want to stay a digital nomad long term so for example in 2020 when the world was on lockdown everyone went crazy buying toilet paper right because we were wealthy nomads back then already and we had our businesses in place 
you had the skill of nomadic clothing mastered. We were prepared, right? So instead of being anxious about our income and not making money or being stuck somewhere, we could just go where we were treated best, right? Back then we could choose a location where we were not as restricted as other people. And actually we made way more money than in the years before, just because we were prepared. People were at home, we could close from anywhere and it was actually a pretty good time for us, except for, of course, the political reasons and other things. But in general, we were prepared and it was a great time for us still, even though everything went to a crap. Yes, and so like this brings us maybe like a little bit more to the goal side of where you want to go with everything, which is usually having some sort of passive income as soon as possible, right? So I mean, everyone wants the hammock life. You be in the hammock and the money just rolls in and you're, and you're like with the margarita or whatever you prefer. Lying on and the beach in Bali yes, with a laptop. <laughs> yes, there you go. There you go. And so like, it's really like the, the question, how can you get there? And for many people, it's like finding this secret loophole in the system. And uh, yeah, usually that's not what it's really like uh, leading you there. It's it's usually like full of scammers and, and full of stuff that just leaves you with less than you had before. The key we found is usually in working on your active income. And that means for a period of time, trading some sort of time against the money side and working for it. And now you got like plenty of choices across the globe. Like you can go with like this job opportunity. You can go with different counters. You can go with different like career paths and so on and so on but like what's important to keep in mind is like the timing factor we don't have time forever so i would go with something that gives you like a high 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 leverage on time and so there is like this one high value skill that you can learn that leads you to be able to earn more than a doctor and that is just like key here when you're working on your active income to make that switch later down the road into the passive side first you need to be able to accumulate then you can multiply and the key thing here is with all of these active income, passive income things that you first find a high value skill for yourself that allows you to create an extremely high active income first so that you can build your first passive side income while still continuing with your first active income, right? And then this passive income is supplementing your first and the stacking. And then you build the next one from the combination of the active and the passive. So you have done two passive ones and then you stack and stack and stack and stack. And if you want to, you can still continue with your active income. This is what we also do. We, we love what we do, but we still have passive income on the side that lets us afford the things that we want to do, right? So if you want to travel, we don't use our active income for that. We use our passive, for example, or if you want to reinvest something, that's totally fine. But we do the things that we do out of abundance, not because we have to do that, but we're doing it because we want to do this. And if you want to have this for yourself, and if you want to discover the key lessons of what we learned from all of these digital nomad experts of the elite of the digital nomads and you can watch this video right here.